Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Loki Kia in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We have that one midsize SUV that really has changed up the whole class of that vehicle. What is it? It's this one right here. This is a 2024 Kia Telluride. This one is an SX Prestige, but it's an SX Prestige X line. But before we get into this Wolf Gray, three row midsize SUV. Let's talk about what's going on here. So in 2019, that was a big year for Kia. That was the birth of this vehicle, the Telluride. It really was something that made the other auto manufacturers start to rethink their game when it comes to the midsize three row SUV. Now, it was the second new vehicle in their lineup, second to the Stinger GT, which unfortunately does not exist anymore for model year 2024. But guess what, the Telluride continues on. Now, a lot of the competition has upped their game, but guess what? Kia has actually brought something all new for model year 2024, kind of taking from this Telluride, what is it? It's their first ever midsize EV, electric SUV known as the EV9. Now we did a review of that, and if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave it at the end of this review, but what I want to find out is if you're going to go into a Kia dealership and you need a mid-sized three-row SUV, should you go with this tried and true Kia Telluride, especially this SX Prestige X-Line, or should you go with the new EV9 GT line? Let's go ahead. Let's see what line you should cross and dive into this Wolf Gray, one of my favorite colors, Wolf Gray Telluride, and find out. Right off the bat, the color. I really think it fits it to a T. And what's interesting is that, remember, this had a recent refresh. Some people loved it. Some people were like, eh, not my favorite. Part of that change was the headlight housing. Not only the housing, but everything internally. You got your LED headlights. And then these are your daytime running lamps. And of course, as you can see, your turn signals. What's interesting is that for model year 2024, all Tellurides now have yellow daytime running lamps. It used to be that the higher trims got the yellow daytime running lamps. Now all of them have yellow daytime running lamps. As you work your way down, you do have this fake vent here, which I'm gonna zonk. I wish that they would have put an LED fog lamp, but I do like the little drop of gloss black. And that's another thing that for the X line and the X pros, instead of it being metallic gloss trim, black trim, it's now just straight up gloss black. So that was another small change that they made for this model year 2024. A Little bit of flat black and then everything else, that wonderful wolf gray color. As we come across the tiger nose grill, really fits this large vehicle perfectly. Of course, you're gonna have a forward facing camera, that nice silver Kia badge, gloss black, and this was refreshed as well for the change up, working your way down, more functionality, a little bit of gloss black, a little bit of flat, flat black, and then we finish off on the X line with the gloss black. Now, if you compare this to the front of the EV9, you would see a lot of similarity in the overall shape because like I said, the EV9 is essentially an electrified Telluride. It's a little bit longer of a vehicle. The wheelbase is a little bit longer compared to the Telluride, but really what it comes down to is that range and then also the price. But we'll get to that in a little bit, but let me know if you're still digging the look of the front end of this Telluride. Now, as we rise up, classy hood. You have two nice kind of canyons on both sides here. Gives it almost the illusion of having a bulge on the hood, even though there's not really one there. And I like the way they gently fold the front of the hood into that tiger nose grill. I think style-wise, I like the Telluride a lot more than the EV9, because remember, the EV9 has to follow certain functions of the front of the vehicle to cut down on drag. Now, as we come around the bend, what do we work with wheel and tire setup? So on this SX Prestige X-Line, you're getting these gloss black wheels, 20-inch wheels. Remember, on the GT line that I showed you, those had 21-inch wheels, so an inch larger in diameter. And if you're wondering what's the tire size, 245 on the width, 50 series sidewall, and these 
are Steven's favorite tires, a tire by Michelin. Those are his favorite tires. One of the things I have to zonk is the flat black around the fender openings. I wish it was all wolf gray. Let me know how you feel about that. On the EV9, the GT line, it's all gloss black around the fender openings. So a little bit different philosophy in what they did. If you're wondering how much ground clearance do you have, 8.3 inches of ground clearance on this GT line. Now, as we rise up, same exact fenders as before, color match on the mirror caps, and they are power folding mirrors, LED trim with the turn signals. You got 360 degree cameras. I like the black chrome finish. This to me really makes this look very classy, both at the bottom and the top. On the GT line, it's all just gloss black. You do have your raised gloss black roof rails. You can get your crossbars. And then there's just a little splattering of gloss black trim along the bottom. But let me know how you feel about the flat black with the gloss black. I think on the Wolf Gray, it's really working well. Coming towards the rear, I love the way they flare out that rear trim on the quarter glass. Looking good, that black chrome. And then as we get to the back, it's almost perfect. What I would love to see is this roof spoiler hide the actual wiper underneath. That would be nice to have it swing down because this just kills the look. So I am gonna zonk that. We know that on the EV9, they have it there. And I wish they would tuck it away just to clean up the back. But LED lighting, nice waterfall effect, looking clean. You got your X-Line badge. And then of course the Telluride. Remember Telluride is actually a town in Colorado. Back in the days of westward expansion, they called it to hell you ride, to hell you ride because of how bad the terrain was. Now, as we drop down, I do like the way they finish it off with the stainless steel tips, but I wish that they would give me four. Why, why not make it a BOGO? Buy one, get one free. If you buy one set, I should get another set for free. And of course, we do have full towing capability, which you could tow up to 5,500 pounds. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood of this Kia Telluride and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. We do have hood struts. Now remember, this is an internal combustion engine powered vehicle where the EV9 is fully electric. It has two electric motors. Now, the interesting thing about that is that of course you have all wheel drive on that dual motor EV9, but guess what? Our Telluride has the optional all wheel drive. But let's talk about underneath the hood. You have that semi tasteful engine cover. It's always looked okay. And you still have the same power plant that they've had since day one with the Telluride. You have a 3.8 liter V6, naturally aspirated, 291 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. If you compare that to the dual motor EV9, you're looking at over 300 horsepower and over 500 pound feet of torque. So definitely more powerful. Eight speed automatic in this Telluride, zero to 60 in about 6.8 seconds, compared to zero to 60 in the EV9 GT line is around 4.5 seconds. Top speed is around 135 miles per hour. You can tow 5,500 miles. The vehicle does weigh 4,469 pounds. MPGs, 18 in the city and 24 on the highway. So interesting take, like I said, do you want to have that ability to not be tied to a charger and you go with the Telluride? Would you just go to any gas station and refuel or do you go the EV9 route? One thing I forgot to mention that Steven actually reminded me is we do have down below the fog lamps, LED. I just wish, I like these, I just wish we had some other lighting to take up this fake vent. I almost wanna just yank it off, <clears throat> just throw it. But anyways, let's fire this thing up and hear if it makes any sound.
All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Kia Telluride SX Prestige. When you hear SX Prestige, you know you're getting one of those top, top trims, but it also has the X-Line package. And one of the things that's kind of cool about the X-Line package is you have a special tow mode. Remember, you could tow 5,500 pounds. You could go 5,500 miles towing. You could go 20,000 miles towing, but 5,500 pounds. And it also has a self leveling rear suspension. That's another thing that you get with the X-Line. So it's not just the black wheels. It's about some usable things. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, put your money where your mouth is. You're comparing this to the EV9 GT line. How much is this? Well, let me remind you, the EV9 GT line had an MSRP of $77,000. Still hurts when I say that, and it's got a range of 270 miles. This vehicle, being an X-Line, a SX Prestige X-Line, has an MSRP of $54,000. So we're talking about $23,000 less expensive for this vehicle over the EV9. Let's see what you get on the interior. To the door panels. Love, 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 love the style of the door panels. Soft touch material. I love that gray wood finish. Some silver trim, no gloss black around the switch gear. And then we have that multi-speaker Harman Kardon sound system with that silver trim around the speaker grill. And then a door pocket large enough for Steven's favorite, a foot-long meatball sub, extra parm, extra meatballs. And of course, a bottle of Dr. Pepper to wash it down. Now, when you're going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. Soft touch material, I like the stitching, this wood finish, very, very nice. And then you come on in, just like the EV9, you're gonna get two 12.3 inch screens in this Telluride. I love the way they curve the screen, so it's more driver focused. Of course, you're gonna have all those apps that Kia brings to the table, including passenger talk, talk which is cool. That's where you're able to use the speaker system, like right now, if you were sitting in the back seat, you would hear me very clearly where I don't have to raise my voice. And on the right-hand side, blah, 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 you get it? So, and you could exit out very easily. So, very easy. I'm still talking passenger talk. I think I'm just going to leave it on. The heck with it. Let me throw it into reverse. I like the resolution of the cameras. 360 trajectory lines. You could do one of those 360 spins. There we are. Steven's right there. You can't see him but I promise you is there, and that door should be open because the door is open. Put it back in the park, right back where we started. Working our way down, real knobs, real buttons, real switches, you have dual climate control, heated seat, heated steering, that's a, well, that's a heated steering wheel. Heated seats, three stages, and three stages of ventilated seats, and I love the way the switch gear is easily accessible, nice stitching. You do have a pocket over here if you're not wearing your banana hanger, you could put your banana right there. We have some gloss black, not my favorite, but I think 98% of the people will drive around like that, which gets rid of most of the gloss black because you have wireless charging, you have a place for two Snickers, and you have a 12 volt, a USB-A, and a USB-C. This is gonna control your eight speed automatic. You got a nice little cup here for some planters, honey roasted peanuts. When I was a kid, I used to eat those until I would get sick. Two cup holders, love the way Kia does their key fob. Very nice, tasteful. I do miss on the Stinger, it looked like a bomb uh, activator switch, but still looking good. You do have your different modes. You can lock the center diff. And like I said, we have tow mode and hill descent control. There's that gloss black, not my favorite, but I do like the soft material, the stitching. Open this up, you have a little cup here. What you're gonna put there are your game tokens to Aladdin's Castle. That used to be my favorite arcade back in the 80s. Galaga, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Pole Position, Afterburner, Operation Wolf. I mean, the list goes on and on. Steven doesn't even know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, you do have a USB-C in there, and then you have enough room, I would say, you probably could put about 50 to 60 NES game cartridges in there and then take them to the flea market and sell them. Make tons of money. My brother and sisters broke all mine. Jerks. 
seats, prestige, you're getting the nice leather, like the way it's got the embossed X line, great stitching, nice soft bolstering, full power assist for the passenger, full power assist for the driver. You have that microfiber suede material throughout. We have a standard sunroof for the people up front, and we have a panoramic fixed glass roof for the people in the mid row and the third row. And then the cherry on top is a nice digital rear view mirror. And no, that's not a Type R, that's just a regular Civic. What can we do? But well, while we come over to the business end, I wanna show you behind the wheel and let you see the special dash in this X line. All right, guys, driver's time, business end. You do have a little aluminum trim. I'm, I'm very shocked that I didn't put like Telluride or something. This seems kind of generic, like they got it from Kmart or something. I do like the pedal box though. They are covered, but these are real aluminum brake pedal and throttle and a super size dead pedal. You do have those great seat controls. And look at this, you have power hammy extension. Look at this, very nicely done. Seats are so comfy. Space in here is wonderful. Steering wheel, looking good. You have your nice gray stitching all the way around, the leather, the simulated stitching, silver on the switch gear. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, which I'm a little shocked by that. But then look at that 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Love the nice scenic uh, scene that you could put there. And then of course you got all your different modes to go through. We don't really have to touch on those, but the best part is are those blind spot cameras. Very, very nicely done. And very similar to what the EV9 has. But like I said, we're talking 20 something thousand dollars less expensive and there's a head up display. But why don't we get into the mid row and the third row and see how this stacks up to the electrified SUV from Kia. All right, guys, here we are, backseat passenger time. And this was one of those areas where, like I said, Kia just blew everybody out of the water. Seats look just as fantastic as the seats up front, and they're heated and ventilated. The actual switch gear, Stephen's gonna show you, the switch gear for the heated and ventilated seats is right there, conveniently placed on the door panel for your passengers. The one zonk I have are these stupid armrests. First of all, they're too skinny. Second of all, I'm not a big fan of the ratcheting kind. I don't, I don't get that. So I'll just tuck it out of the way. Backs of the seats, you do have some plastic. This is good for when your kids are kicking the back of your seat with their muddy shoes. You can clean it off. You do have a nice little holder there for their cell phone. And then you have a pocket here where you could put, I would say, two family-sized bags of Twizzlers. And let me know down in the comment section, are you a fan of licorice? I noticed before, some people don't like licorice. There's cherry, there's strawberry, and let me know if you like the black licorice. That's always a unique flavor for unique people. The back of the command center, very simple. You do have, of course, your cup holders. We got USB-Cs nicely placed in the back of both seats. Down below, you have a 12 volt home power source. Plug on in. Obviously, these seats, they slide. They also recline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this one up because I want Steven to have plenty of room for the third row to show you. And it's real simple. You actually just hit this button. Voila, look how simple that is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and climb back here. And this is the thing that I try to tell everybody. If you want more room back here, you're gonna to have to get a full size SUV, but it really isn't too bad. My knees aren't too high. I have Alcantara, we got some PDI film that somebody forgot, that's a zonk on them. We have, of course, like I said, that panoramic roof, USB-Cs, cup holders. It's just, why does the third row get the crappy seats? Like, look at the material, it's not even the same as the other two rows. This is a $54,000 SUV. I want my third row passenger to not feel like a, a peasant. It's that simple. But I do like the AC vents and you do have LED uh, map lighting. The reason why they call it map lighting is because people used to once have to use maps to know where they're going and to be able to see them in the dark because they don't light up by themselves like your iPhone. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the cargo area and see how this stacks up to the EV9. All right guys, cargo area time, obviously very important for any SUV. You hit the button, you have the nice electric assist just like you have on the EV9. What you're gonna be greeted to, I left the third row up, what you're gonna be greeted to is right around 21 cubic feet of space. Now, the great news is 
just like the EV9, it's very easy to fold the seats down. And that's what I love about the Telluride. No fancy motors. You just pull the tether and then you just let it go. Voila, 60, 40 split. Right now you have, like I said, around 48 cubic feet of space. I like the way that they have the buttons located here to fold down the mid row. You also have a 12 volt. That's our subwoofer for our sound system. And you have, of course, that five Twinkie holder in the back. And there's the USB-Cs I was telling you about for your third row passengers. Now, when you fold down that mid row, you now have 87 cubic feet of space. So definitely a lot of usable room. Pick this bad boy up. Look at all the freaking storage, man. This is ridiculous. I could actually put underneath here probably about, I would say 75 Beanie Babies. Say you're going to the flea market, you're finally gonna let your Beanie Baby collection go. After all those years of investing, you could put those 75 Beanie Babies in here. Not a problem. Hold on. There we go. But while we go ahead, I'm gonna hit this button that's gonna drop electrically. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go for a little spin in this Telluride and see if it's the one to choose over the evening. All right, guys, we are leaving Loki Kia. We're in this 2024 Telluride SX Prestige X-Line. And right away, what you're gonna love is all the finishes in this Telluride. I mean, this is another reason why this vehicle was such a game changer when it first came out back in 2019 is because it takes the whole concept of what you know as Kia before this and throws it right out the window. Everywhere you look and you touch, you have these really nice finishes. Like I said, easy to get to those ventilated seats, the heated seats. And with this having all wheel drive, it's gonna help you through the worst of road and weather conditions. Visibility is great. The one thing to remember is that compared to the EV9, this has less passenger volume. So there's less room in here for you and your passengers because the EV9 has a lower floor because there's no drivetrain. You just have the battery pack. This has the drivetrain, the drive shaft, all that stuff to where you have a little less room. And I think the people who are gonna notice it the most are the people sitting in the third row. Those are the ones that are gonna notice just how less room there is in the third row of the Telluride compared to the EV9, but still very impressive for a mid-size SUV. Driving away, you have nice linear torque delivery. We've already talked about the EV9 in a drag race is gonna beat you. But remember, the EV9 has only a 270 mile range, which is not the highest that really it should be. It needs to be around 350, to be honest. But with this EV, with this Telluride, compared to the EV9, you're not gonna have to worry about that range because obviously this uses a 3.8 liter V6 that's internal combustion engine. But going down the road, very, very smooth. A little bit noisier than in the EV9 just because of uh, less sound deadening material, but still very, very quiet in here. Love the addition of the digital rear view mirrors. And the way it looks, I think that is to me, one of my favorite things about the Telluride is that it's always looked really good, especially when you go with a higher trim and in this color wolf gray but going down the road the seats are supportive without being like too hard and like i said having the option to easily switch into different modes gives it a different personality depending on what you want out of your driving experience and then we're gonna see how the on-throttle experience is around this corner, are you ready? On-throttle, here we go. Eight-speed drops down and we are off. Love the blind spot cameras. Decent shifts from the eight-speed automatic, not the smoothest, but I've also been in worse. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the comfort mode just so that we can drop 
the revs down. That's one of the things is remember in sport mode, that's really going to uh, affect how the engine and the transmission behaves and how it's going to keep it at a higher RPM in sport mode compared to comfort. But of course, you're going to get the Kia DriveWise safety features. And we're going to get out on the highway and see how this thing cruises down the road in about T minus two seconds here. Are you ready? I'm ready. On throttle. Here we go. So that's acceleration in normal mode. And remember, when you're in normal mode, it's going to calm everything down. When you go into the different modes, it's going to affect the steering sensitivity, throttle sensitivity, and how the engine and the transmission behaves with one another. I could even display in the center there, what's kind of cool is your all-wheel drive. So when I get on throttle, you'll see it sends power to the rear wheels. Love it when they have that image there so you really get an understanding of how this vehicle operates. Two-wheel drive, which is front-wheel drive based, and then it sends more power to the rear wheels. That helps with fuel economy. Whereas the EV9 is full all-wheel drive because of the two electric motors. But going down the road, like I said, not a bunch of road noise or wind noise, a decent, you know, just a, a subtle amount, nothing too over the top. And you're really sitting in some nice features when you go SX Prestige. But I'm hoping that this has been a good overall review of the Telluride SX Prestige x line compared to the ev9 gt line we're gonna get back to loki kia and wrap this one up so i'll see you in a split second all right guys been another great day here at loki kia definitely want to thank robert danny and the rest of the crew getting us access to this wolf gray telluride sx prestige x line trim let me know what you think are you ready to make the jump and plug in with the ev9 gt line or are you still digging what this Telluride has to bring. Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Razor Rise family. Of course, we need to thank Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography, working that camera day in and day out. He's now going to the gym with the camera rig and actually working out while he's holding the camera rig. So definitely appreciate your dedication, Stephen. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.